Hi, friends. Welcome to No Syllabus Podcast Book Club. It's where I share books that had a positive impact on my life. This book club is about saving time and providing maximum value. In other words, it's meant to be concise. With that being said, let's jump right in. Welcome back. Today, we'll be talking about one of my favorite books to recommend, which is How Will You Measure Your Life by Clayton Christensen. You may be already familiar with his work, such as Innovator's Dilemma. That book has been mentioned by Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Andy Grove of Intel, and slew of other founders as a must-read. However, my favorite work by Clayton Christensen is How Will You Measure Your Life? And by far, it's my knee-jerk reaction when someone asks, what book should I read? So what's the book about? So let's talk about book in three bullets. Bullet number one, we should measure our life by what actually matters to us and not by job slash career accomplishments. Bullet number two, finding fulfillment is different for each person, but there is a framework for guidance. And lastly, what you think brings happiness versus what actually brings happiness are different. And it's that third bullet that got me hooked on this book. So who is this book for? It's for anyone that's not fully satisfied with your career or even your job as a whole. Or if you attained a certain level of success, but still haven't attained quote-unquote true happiness. Or if you're not sure what truly matters in your life in the long term. Well, then why did I read it? I read it because I achieved a certain level of career and financial success that I've set out for myself. But as he mentions earlier, I felt kind of lost once I got there. And I didn't know what it means to be fulfilled and what brings that fulfillment. Because up until that point, achievement and fulfillment was the same thing. But then it starts to separate as you get higher and higher up in your career and whatnot. So in general, I was curious about, in that case, what really matters? Or at least what matters at the end of life? So what does this book help with? It helps with many things, but we always talk in threes. So one, it helps figuring out what actually means in a broad human experience and personally. Two, understanding what we want will change over time and how to adapt your ambition with the changing environment. That's the tough one regarding, you heard it before, goalposts moving and whatnot, understanding you're enough and why you start to crave different things. And then lastly, Recognize that the purpose and fulfillment is here and now, not far off in some career title or future version of your life. And this is more so about being present. We heard it before, but he puts it in such a concrete way. I suggest you read the book. So in the end, what did I get out of it? One, setting your principles and be unwavering in who you are. This can be summed up as being authentic. But we talk about authenticity, but no one really knows what that really means. Be authentic. Bring your authentic self to work, but not too much authenticity. Still be a little bit corporate. That's essentially the message. But Clayton, you will see throughout the book, literally lived a life that is true to himself. And by doing so, I believe that's a rich life. So he tells you how to set your principles and how to be unwavering in who you are. And two, people and friends need to be watered every day. It grows like trees. Get ahead and be consistent. So that's one thing that we forget sometimes, at least I do. When you have an old friendship, you believe it's already set in stone because you put in two years in college or four years in college, what have you. And it doesn't need the attention. However, it needs to be watered every day. That includes, you know, text messages, calls, and even hanging out together. Jonathan Haidt mentions in my podcast that best way to build intimacy is go on trips together. And that has better sustainability to that relationship than, let's say, sending funny memes on Instagram. But he reminds us in this book, he meaning Clayton Christensen, that people and friends need to be watered every day. It grows like trees, so get ahead and be consistent. And that applies to platonic friendship, romantic ones, as well as with your parents. Now, lastly, care less about your status in society, but more about the role you play in the relationship you have with those around you. 
This is just straight up wisdom. It's a little bit tougher for those of us that are playing this full contact sport called career in metropolitan. In other words, if you're going after your big job in New York City. However, it allows you to rethink about what really matters. And it's those relationships that you have with those that are close to you. With all that being said, let's jump to my favorite seven quotes. So first one, too many of us who start down the path of compromise will never make it back. That is essentially him going back to talking about setting your principles and be unwavering in who you are. He mentions in the book, it's much easier to be 100% no on something rather than 95% no on something. In other words, it's it's easier to be 100% vegan than 90% vegan. Or you won't drink 100% of the time versus 98% of the time. Because it is a difference in between, in this case, 98 to 100, meaning 2% difference. That's the gray area. And then there's no principle there. And it makes it difficult because it is dependent on your mood, peer pressure, and many things. So it's much easier to just not compromise at all. And that was a takeaway for me, too. It is frightfully easy for us to lose our sense of the difference between what brings money and what causes happiness. And I think this is a case for those of us just starting our career. So when you're in college, you don't really make any money. So any dollar will have a significant impact in your life. I remember going to $70,000 in terms of salary, and that changed my life. All of a sudden, I could afford a lot of things. I could possibly even get an appetizer, split with a friend, or get additional scoop of guac or double meat at Chipotle or what have you. And then I equated that with happiness. But as you progress in your career, it starts to taper off a little bit. And it causes somewhat of, I don't want to say existential crisis, but it does question your beliefs around, hey, I thought more money meant more happiness because that hasn't been the case for the past 25, 30 years. So how can this be? But he mentions here in the book, it's frightfully easy for us to lose our sense of the difference between what brings money and what causes happiness. It could be the same thing, but he's just asking you to be more mindful about it. I thought that was a great point. Three, if the decisions you make about where you invest your blood, sweat, and tears are not consistent with the person you aspire to be, you'll never become that person. That's deep. And this is something that I think all of us struggles with. We watch a motivational clip, whatnot, and you say, hey, I want to be that person. I want to be the person that wakes up at five. But you don't. You don't really spend time on it. I want to become a, whatever, stand-up comedian. And, but you don't go tell your jokes or you don't work on your jokes or whatever it may be. He's reminding you that you need to spend time on becoming who you aspire to be. And way to do that, obviously, is through consistency. It was just a good reminder. Four, high achievers focus a great deal on becoming the person they want to be at work and far too little on the person they want to be at home. This is another deep comment by Clayton Christensen. He brought this up because he talks about at Harvard, his graduating class uh, went on to become CEOs and these high-powered business people. I think one of them ended up as a CEO of Enron, and obviously, uh, he went to jail. But he talked about on the way to the top, in this case, way to the top of business world, there were a lot of compromises made in their home life with his family and whatnot. He meaning Clayton Christensen. He realized that early on when he was a consultant at BCG and that he saw it in his classmates as well, from divorce to having no relationship with the kids, family, and etc. And he made a decision, I don't want to be that person. Ultimately, it's those close relationships that's what matters. And he's asking you, in this case, the reader, to be focus a little more on becoming a better person at home rather than only focusing on the person you want to be at work. It's almost like talking about that balance, work-life balance and whatnot, or just being a holistic person, but 
it's very important to highlight given when this book was written. It's it wasn't written obviously yesterday. So for to have that foresight when work life balance and all of these things weren't in place or weren't in our culture then, it's it's worth highlighting. Five. Having shallow friendships with many, but deep friendships with none. I think we already get the gist of this. It's much more fulfilling to have one friend where that relationship runs so deep than thousands of followers or whatnot. And Kevin Kelly mentions this in terms of entrepreneurship or as a writer. It's much better to have thousand true fans than hundred million acquaintances. Scott Galloway, a professor at NYU Stern and obviously a host of Prof G. He also mentions in his book, The Algebra of Wealth, that when he moved to New York after his divorce, he thought he made many friends, but what he did was just many acquaintances to go out and drinking with that didn't help him with his life or something of that nature. So cultivating deep friendships is what matters in the end, and he's urging you to do so, he meaning Clayton. Six. The only way to have those relationships bear fruit in your life is to invest long before you need them. And this is echoing the sentiment by Warren Buffett as well. You're sitting in a shade today because someone planted a tree long time ago. It's the same concept. Best time to start was years ago. Second best time is now. So to have those deep relationships that he mentions or friendships and whatnot, you need to invest long before you need them. So that allowed me to start reaching out a little bit more to those that I may not be close with that I want to become close to and paying attention to the ones that I already have because as he mentioned before, your relationship needs to be watered every day. And last, number seven, self-esteem. The sense that Quote, I'm not afraid to confront this problem, and I think I can solve it. Doesn't come from abundant resources. Rather, self-esteem comes from achieving something important when it's hard to do. And I wrote about this in my diary before, whenever I come across certain individuals with like the aura or like the confidence that has this like orange glow behind them, as Dave Chappelle talked about in his stand-up with Rick James or in on his show about Rick James having like a glowing aura behind them. You can't buy that type of confidence. Specifically, in my class with Greg Coleman, Jeff Zucker, former CEO of CNN, showrunner for The Daily, like came in and gave us a talk. And he had this aura of someone who achieved something. It's not... Not an aura of, hey, I have a lot of money, but more of, hey, I made something happen. I've done something important when it was hard to do. I made things happen. And you can't buy that. And that's what stuck out to me. So that was quote number seven. With all that being said, last segment, Suhan's potent mix. All that means is books to read together. So how will you measure your life? I would read that with The Last Lecture by Randy Pausch. And The Alchemist. I think those three books together are very potent mix. So give it a go. And that is all for today's book club. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope to see you around. As always, everything I've mentioned is in the show notes. If you have a book suggestion for me, please send it to me at nosyllabus.com forward slash questions. Thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you around.